Beloved family, do you know what I want you should do? I want you should watch a series of interviews I had with you. You're never even going to guess who it is. It's Michael Voris. Excuse the expression. I'm here with Michael Voris because I have such appreciation for a man who speaks the truth and is not afraid and loves our Lord as he does. So it's churchmilitant.com. And if you don't watch, I'm going to hit you with our rulers. But we're making our new rulers out of sponge. So you're going to be okay. But watch. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. Someone is not being truthful about the whole question of homosexuality and the Catholic clergy. Our Vortex report last week citing statistics saying somewhere between 15 and 58 percent of priests in America are homosexual seems to have touched a nerve. Some clerics responded privately as well as publicly saying, no way. Others responded privately as well as publicly saying, right on. So which is it? Then, just as things were quieting down, along comes the Pope's right-hand man last week saying that indeed a homosexual lobby exists in the Vatican and the Pope is trying to deal with it. Of course, that can't come as a shock to anyone, really. You'll recall that just before the Synod kicked off last October, Father Christoph Olaf Karamza, who worked inside the Vatican's Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith for years, came out with his boyfriend for the whole world to see. Then, of course, there was Father Darius Oko of Poland, who released a damning report also indicating the presence of a so-called lavender mafia in the church. He said in his report that the same problem going on in the world with regards to a militant homosexual agenda driving everything is also happening in the church, and it needs to be exposed. And moreover, shortly before Pope Benedict resigned, there was the issuance of that 300-page dossier delivered to him personally, also giving details on the apparently not-so-secret homosexual lobby inside the Vatican. Point by point, the case builds and continues to build that this is a serious problem in the clergy. From the time these kinds of records and statistics and reports and studies have been conducted, not one has ever said this is not a problem in the Catholic clergy. The only bone of contention is just how big a problem it is. Then, of course, you have the other blow-the-doors-off report from the 2004 report that an overwhelming number of priest abusers in the sex abuse scandal targeted teenage boys, moving on to 90 percent. Yet, in the face of all of this evidence, and evidence that is this mountainance begins to be called proof, you still have some in the clergy saying, no, it's not true, or it used to be true, but it isn't anymore. Or, many of the sexually abusive priests weren't homosexual, they were just confused and, well, boys were an easy target. Now, it might be the case, might, that the incidence of homosexual men being ordained is decreasing, but there's no hard proof for that. And if we allow for argument's sake that it is true, all that means is that in the next 20 to 25 years, the problem will have diminished to some degree. Is that really the best that can be done? Sacrifice yet another generation to rotten catechesis and homosexual collective church of nice leadership? Talk about long suffering. The data from some of these studies reveal that many of the homosexual priests are only in their 40s and 50s, and they don't seem to be going anywhere. Frankly, the church in America doesn't have another 20 or 25 years to wait for the problem to evaporate and disappear on its own. Why is there so much lying or cover-up or misinformation spread around by church leadership whenever this discussion comes up? That's the subject of this week's Miked Up program, The Culture of Cover-Up. We saw it back in the Boston case in 2002 and have seen it in many cases since then, right up to and including the current cover-up in the Archdiocese of New York that we've reported extensively on. On this week's Miked Up, we talk to the screenwriter of the hit movie Spotlight, to get his views on these kinds of cover-ups and why he wrote the movie. You know, to me, what's been most uh, surprising, uh, upsetting, and also, frankly, uh, you know, in some ways, um, uh, touching, has been I've had a number of friends reach out uh, who uh, have been abused uh, and who have said, "Thank you for making this movie." And these are people I didn't know were abused. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, uh, 
a guy I went to college with sent me an, an email, very bright guy. Um, and, you know, really it was shocking to me to get that email. And, um, and uh, you know, both upsetting and incredibly touching. While the motives of non-Catholics may not be pure, for Catholics who love the faith, the motive for all of this is to clear out the filth, as Pope Benedict called it, and help the church get back to her mission. So please watch this week's Miked Up and get a refreshing dose of honesty. God love you. I'm Michael Voris. Thank you.